Retriever. Golden. golden retriever. I got a soft spot for goldens. I'll probably get into that a little bit. Dratar to a cocker span. He, you went from a Dratar? He had a Dratar, really versatile dog. And now he's cocker, he cringed when I said that. Now you're a cocker spaniel? Gonna be, okay. What kind of you got? I have a Weinreimer. Wimes. Who's got, who's got a, anybody else got a pointing dog? I like little pointing dogs. I, the GSP, I don't have one myself. Someday I probably will. Um, I brought a couple dogs with me. These guys are, uh, these guys are British field dogs. So I'm going to put one here. This is Spry. If you guys, I, this, this is a, a dog, Spry, come here. Spry is a dog that we trained last year. She's two. Um, she's one of our personal dogs. She's my daughter's dog. My daughter's nine years old. Uh, she named her. It's named after a cartoon, some type of a cartoon, but um, I think the name is very fitting. She's quite spry, but she is, um, she's two and we trained her on Facebook. I mean, we, I didn't train her on Facebook. I trained her at my house, but we taped it on Facebook and we did it live. And so I like to give a little disclaimer um, before I get started on any seminars. My dogs today are going to make mistakes. Guaranteed. I, I think I think it's di I, I think it's doesn't help you much if I come up here with Taylor. Taylor's this dog that's laying down here, just as sweet as can be. She's five years old. Uh, she's the mascot for Whitetails Unlimited. She's a shed dog. She's a tracking dog. She does upland, pheasants, grouse, chuckers. She does. She's a gun dog. I shoot waterfall over her, geese, ducks. She handles. She's really a nice dog. Um, She's a certified therapy dog. She goes to a school, a local school, does, works with kids that have autism and different disabilities. She does everything. I'm just gonna take some of this stuff out because we're gonna start getting into it. She does everything. I could come up here and I could do a, a, a demonstration with her and I think you'd all be pretty impressed. Like, she's pretty good. Now, you notice this dog over here on the left, well, she's, she's happy right now. She's, she's excited. What did I start doing? I went to the old magic bag. Now, I have to confess, I, made, I said my dogs are gonna make mistakes today. I will make more than them. I can guarantee you that. Now, I'm a trainer. I'll back up. Uh, my name is Jeremy Moore. I'm from Wisconsin, up, up near Green Bay, a little town called Pulaski. We have a small company. It's called Dogbone. Uh, that's one of the brands. We have another brand. We actually have a booth downstairs. We're selling Dogbone stuff, but we also have another brand called Hodeg. It's a deer. It's for deer stuff. It's a scent communication thing. It's, a, it's two things that I patented, started in 2007. Got a patent in 2009, got another patent in 2011, got another patent in 2015, got four of them total. And we're a super small company. We didn't have the resources to do two products at once. We started with the dog stuff. We got a real nice fit into retail. We sell all of our stuff at stores like Bass Pro, Cabela's, Shields, Fleet Farms, you name it. Like we, we do a lot of business with retail. The reason is, part of the reason is, I love training dogs. Like, this is, I should introduce Jeff. Jeff is a buddy of mine. He's actually a client. Started out as a client, has become a friend. He, we'll see how this ends with, he's not done with me yet, but uh, this is his dog, Tito. So, when we start out, when I started out, now I train a limited number of dogs each year. He's a client, that's a client's dog. Tito is, is that. I've got three other ones, right? two other ones right now. Um, that I'm training for, for people. I do a real limited number of them because they take time, take a lot of work. Um, it, it's not easy. Like, I'm not a kennel. I, we have a business, I have a warehouse, we ship stuff out to stores. So, but I, I sell training products. And the reason I train dogs is because I sell dog training products. And I don't think you should sell products if you don't do the stuff. So why do I train the dogs? First off, come on in guys. I train dogs because I love working with the dogs. Our deer stuff is because I love deer hunting. So I, I'm really lucky. I have two loves and I get to do both of them for my job. But the reason I only do a limited number of dogs is because it takes a lot, but it's not hard. Who thinks dog training is hard? I have, we have one honest person in this group of however many we have here. I, I, I think a misconception out there is, is that training is real difficult. It's not. It's extremely easy. It's being consistent 
and being patient and understanding what it takes to get these guys to do what I want them to do. Because I can't just explain it to them. I can't just talk. Like, I'm going to talk a lot today. And I talk fast. So if I lose anybody, I'm like, right now I'm slow. Like, I'll get warmed up and look out. But if, if I tell these dogs what I want, they're going to look at me probably a little inquisitive. I heard something in his tone. I'm not sure what the hell he wants. They just don't know. I just can't explain it to them. So it's, we have this idea of dog training being real difficult. It's really not. It's actually pretty simple. But the things that you have to understand is how, how to get them to understand what I want them to do. We're going to talk about shed training. We want dogs to pick these up. All right. You stay right there. Don't move. She's ducking already. Now, bring that back. I'll get you this time. I missed you. No, just kidding. Now, Taylor was asleep. You guys can't even see her. She's laying here. She met friends. They petted her. She thought, no, you're good. Leave that one there. Well, that was a good little retrieve coming. <laughs> okay, now watch. Okay, now I went like this and I blew my whistle. Beep, 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 beep. Do you know what that means? You can say, do you know what that means? No. Why would you? I've never worked with you before. That's recall. Beep, 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 beep. So here's what I'm going to do. When I blow my whistle, and I put my hands out like this. When I blow my whistle like this, beep, 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 beep. And I go like this. I want you to come running to me, okay? Don't pick that up. Just come running to me. Ready? <laughs> Have we worked together before? <laughs> because you just nailed it. Now, so here's, I've never done that before. So here's, now I'm going to back up again. My seminar, like when I do a seminar, I didn't know we were going to do that. Like I don't, it goes back to that idea of doing a demonstration. I don't come to do demonstrations because if I came and did a demonstration, I'd take Taylor here, heel, Taylor, Good. Good. Right here. Right here. Don't ring it to them. Right here. Good. Dead. So I'd show you that and you'd go, wow, who, who thought it was cool? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love support. It makes me feel good. I liked that I sent her out and I stopped her on a whistle. Like, she saw the antler there. It was bright white. Color contrast. It's easy for them to see. It was bright white. It was a shape that she recognized. She's picked these up before. She knows that this thing is a retrieve. She saw it. She ran down to it. And then she heard the old man in the back go, beep. And if you heard me, I stopped. But she kept going. And so I went, I upped that. Boom. And as she kept going, she went, oh, God. And she turned around. Tempting. Real tempting. I mean, it was two more steps since she had it. She knows she's supposed to pick these things up. But I stopped her. I turned. And then what did I do? What's your name? Lily. Chloe? Lily. Lily. Lily? I have a daughter that turned one month on Wednesday. Her name is Lillian. And we call her Lily. That was meant to be. So I miss her a lot. So we did that. I stopped her. It was hard for her, but she did. She turned because she heard that whistle. I went beep, 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 beep. I went like this. She came running to me. I went beep. She stopped. I said, get back. She turned. She went back. She picked it up. She brought it back. Perfect, right? Seminar is over. Go home and do that. <laughs> do you know how frustrating that is? I've been to seminars. I've sat in these chairs. I've watched a lot of people give training seminars. I think you should. I think you should go to as many as you can. 
I think you should listen to as many people as you can. I think you don't necessarily take every word I say for gospel, because it's not. But I think you take things that work, things that, try it. If it doesn't work for you, eh, I'm not going to do that. Maybe it's not your style. So find the right style. But take parts and pieces of it and put it together. That's how you develop your own. That's how I did it. I listened to a lot of people. But I saw these people do seminars. They were called seminars. I watched them do amazing things with their dogs. And then I went home, very inspired, very motivated. This is awesome. I saw the guy do it. I, I took notes. I didn't take notes. Where's our notes? God, I give you cheat sheets. I'm going to pass these around. Uh, I'll pass it around. Uh, if you want to start handing them out, you just take one and pass it to the next person. If you want to do that. And then we'll start some from the back. We should have enough, I think. If we don't, we'll get you some more. But So I give you those. I better take one. Here's why I take one. Can I use yours for a second? Here's why I do cheat sheets. Because some people, I have had people come to them before with a notebook, take notes. I do it partially because I think it's helpful. I think it's real simple stuff. But I also do it to keep myself on track. Like, I need it. I need a plan. When I come here to do a seminar, I don't have a rehearsed thing. That thing that Lily and I just did was not rehearsed. But I'm going to make a point out of it because I think there's an opportunity for it. But, so when, we, when you pass these around, there's just some real basic stuff. I'm going to use this kind of as my roadmap. I think it's important as a trainer to have a roadmap. I think it's important to understand like a real broad perspective of your goals and how you're going to get there. And you're going to get there because they're all linked together. Everything is incrementally built off of things. Like we, we thank you. One of the things on here, and I don't, don't get, I don't know that the numbering is truly sequential in, in importance, but number four is incremental training, build off your last lesson. Like I am a big believer in it. I think with dog training, it's all building blocks. You have to do something, build off of it. Do something, build off of it. You're going to run into issues. Don't be afraid to go back. I do it all the time. So I would have had to do it. If, if she made a mistake there, I'd have redone it. I'd have set it up a little bit different. But she didn't. She did a real nice job. That's the reason I don't do demonstrations. We're going to make mistakes. Now, with Lily, when we sent her out there, I, said, I called her with the whistle. Beep, 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 beep. She didn't come. <laughs> Darn it, Lily. <laughs> That Lily. It's not Lily's fault. She didn't know what I wanted. When your dog doesn't do what you want it to do, it's not your dog's fault. It's because do dogs don't do things to spite us. Like, who's a parent in here? Raise your hand if you're a parent. Okay? Raise your hand if you have a parent. <laughs> Everybody just raised their hands. Like, I'm not going to let anybody slip through the cracks. If you are a parent or you have a parent, you somewhat understand the idea of at times people can do things a bit, to be a bit spiteful. Like, I'm going to show her. I'm going to show him. I'm going to do something because of that. These guys don't do it. You know what these guys want to do? They want to make us happy. Oh, that's one of the reasons I love working with dogs. They don't talk back. They don't want to do things to make you mad. They will do things that make you mad. When it happens... It's your fault, 99% of the time. I'm okay with saying that. I make lots of mistakes. I've, I've probably said that three times now since we started, and the reason I do it is because a lot of people aren't okay with saying that. I think self-awareness is really an important part of life. I think it's a really important part of dog training. Like, when my dog doesn't do something right, 99% of the time I didn't set him up right. That's okay. Fix it. Be okay with it and fix it. So with Lily, I didn't set her up right. I did it on purpose. I knew you, I knew you weren't going to recall unless you watched the video. <laughs> you didn't watch the DVD. <laughs> she watched all of it. You missed that part. <laughs> so when she didn't come to me, then I said to her, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this. You do this. She nailed it because she understood. Now, I could tell her that. She could comprehend it. She did it. When she came running up to me and I went, what did she do? She froze. We never talked about that part, Lily, did we? But what did I do in a single blast? That's like an international body language thing. If someone's running down the hall to you and you see someone go, what do you do? You stop. What did I do with my dog? Called her to me. 
I stopped her. I didn't say a word. I've never said a word to her. I've never explained to her. Taylor, when I blow the whistle repeatedly and go like this, come running to me. And then when I blast the whistle, single stop, and I go cop, cop stop to you. You stop and you sit and look at me. She wags her tail. You know why she wags her tail? She loves my tone of voice in that. She can sense my little sarcasm. And her tail goes... Doo, 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 doo. She's happy right now. A lot of people can't see her. Her tail right now is going... And, she's, and I think she's actually thinking, I think he's going to do something again. <laughs> Boy, this is awesome. I really enjoy doing this. Okay? But that, that body language was clear to Lily, and she read it. Boom. So that's just a real, real micro. I didn't know we were going to do that, but that's just a micro example of everything I do with these guys is driven real heavily by body language. I just wrote an article uh, about speaking very clearly to my dog without using a word. I just, there's a uh, magazine, it's called Badger Sportsman, and I wrote this article for him. And I talked about like important things. There's like, what's the thing that my mom used to tell? My actions speak a lot louder than my words. Like that's life. Like that's a really good thing. You can take the depths of that. That matters to my dogs. So one of the real important things that I t I've been on a little kick lately is body language stuff. When I need to get serious, I don't have to say a word. I just change my, my mannerisms. And the dogs go, whoa, he's serious. So I'm gonna show, we're going to show you some of that stuff. Now, shed training. We'll get back on track. Like, none of that stuff is supposed to be a part of the seminar, but i got to check my clock, make sure we're... Because oh, it's only 6.15. We're going to be fine. So, there, here's more... You came to hear a shed seminar, right? So I don't want to disappoint anyone. That's usually probably not the way to set this line up. But uh, what is, how is it? I don't want to sound like a jerk. But whenever you say that, you're going to sound like a jerk, right? So I don't want to disappoint anyone. Don't be disappointed. Shed training is what we're going to talk about. Who came here to listen about shed stuff? Who shed hunts? I mean, I asked about a couple dogs. We had some people come in after. Um, lots of labs. Retrieve, we had some, a lot of retrievers. We, we did have a couple pointers. Lot, a big question that I hear a lot about is, is you know, what's, I had, I've heard it four times since the show opened. What's, what's the best breed for this? Because they all look at my booth and they look, and see any of the stuff we've done on TV and they see lab, 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 lab all these little labs. And they are little. They're little British field dogs. But it's, what's the, they must be the best. I don't think they're the best. I think they're the best for me. I think they fit my style of training. I use a very low pressure means. Of, now that doesn't mean I'm a treat trainer. I think a lot of people go, oh, you got a pocket full of kibble. When the pup comes up, it gives them a nice little. Now when they're little puppies, I might motivate with food. I'll show you the power of food. Tito's asleep, I like that. Here's, here's something. I am not. Taylor's ears haven't perked like that since this morning when I fed her. Look at him, if you can see him. He went from laying flat on the floor to perfect attention. I mean, he's, he is ready. He looks really nice here. Now, take a picture of that, John. <laughs> looks really good. <laughs> so, I do think food can be a motivator, and I am big on positive stuff, but I am not a treat trainer. I don't believe in it. I think it's bribery. When my kids do things right, I don't give them a dollar. Because as soon as they stop doing, as soon as I stop giving them a dollar, they're no dummies. Why should I do it? They're motivated by the dollar. I want them motivated because they won't know it's good. Like, you're doing the right thing. That's what I want. Ha that's a habit. Habits are created by f repetition and consistency. That's all dog training is. So when we started, we started talking about how some people think it's complicated. It's not. It's very easy. You have to have a lot of patience, and you have to understand that dog training is nothing more than forming a habit. These dogs all have habits. Their habit has been formed when the food bowl comes out. Sit still, be quiet. Now, did you hear her squeaking a little bit up here? <laughs> Boy, she's excited. She eats last. Like, that's what would happen. We're not going to feed her first. We're not going to reward that. That's not desired. I don't want that. So, we're gonna so I take these little, who's got a little, you're going to get a little puppy. Who's got real, right? Your puppy's coming. Who's got little puppies at home? How old's your pup? Six weeks. You got it already? So, well, I think I'm about 
we'll pick him up on Sunday. Yeah. So young, like right, right, right. Like to me, seven weeks is a really perfect age. I think it's a physical thing, and I think it's a mental thing. And uh, some are six. I see some people keep them till eight. Everybody's a little bit different. Six weeks is like you're just starting. You've got a blank slate. Be excited about it. Now, the sleepless nights. I got, I got a one-month-old baby. I don't want to hear about sleepless nights. Uh, but, but you're going to have all these things that aren't so great. But the beauty of it right now is you've got... So who? So six weeks. Who else here has a puppy? How old yours? Four months. Probably one of my favorite ages. 16 weeks is about my favorite. I'm not big into the puppy stuff. My wife and kids like the puppy stuff. I could, I think the breath smells like a skunk. I don't, I'm not real big on it. But I don't, they don't do a lot. You know, and I'm not real big on it. I think it's nice to imprint some good things early on, but at four months, they turn into like little, little dogs a little bit. They start, it starts to, light bulbs start to turn on. They get, it, they're sharp. They, we start to really, I like that age. Probably my favorite age. How old's yours? One. One. What's your dog's name? Annie. Annie. You got a puppy, Annie. Uh, 11 months. 11 months. And what's your dog's name? Uh, Scout. Scout? I had, a, I had a couple of real good Scouts. What kind is yours, Lab? Uh, wine. Wine. You got the wine. Okay. Who else has a pup? How old? 12 weeks. And yours is what kind? Lab. Lab. Okay. Someone had a pup over here? Eight months. Eight months. Real nice age. Anybody else puppies? Who's got dogs in that range from like one to two? You all lied to me. You got puppies. I, I make a point of this age thing. And your, look, your face, look on your face right now. Oh my God. I didn't mean it. I mean, but here's the thing. Two years old and younger, I call them puppies. I've got a puppy, a year and a half right there. This one, at day, there's a lot of days I think she's a puppy. You know, she's a little over two, but she's still a puppy. Why, the reason I make this point is I think we, they look like dogs a lot sooner than they act like dogs, mentally our dogs. And I think we have expectations of looks like a dog should act like a dog. I wouldn't. How old are you? Six, seven. Seven. I had to think about that for a second. You did. Seven. What grade is seven? First grade. First grade. All right. I, do you play any sports? No. No. Do you play sports? Um, How old are you? Uh, Eleven. Eleven. So 11 would make you fifth grade? Uh, yeah. Fifth grade. Eleven. What sport do you play? Uh, football. Plays football. Did you make varsity this year? What? Did you make varsity this year? Oh, you didn't make the varsity team? Boy, he might not make it. He, he's 11. He didn't make the varsity football team. <sighs> Mom and Dad, I, I, don't know, I don't know if he, we should stick with this football thing. Maybe we throw in the towel. What else do you like to do? Uh, baseball. Baseball. Did you make varsity? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you have an agent? Do you have an agent? No. Okay. We'll talk after. <laughs> okay. He made varsity as an 11-year-old. That's very good. How many 11-year-olds play varsity sports? Not very many. If your 11-year-old doesn't make the varsity football team, I don't know that I'd hang it up in football. I think I might stick it out a little bit and give him a chance to grow up and understand the game, physically mature, mentally mature, understand football. And most of you guys would probably agree, like, 11 would be a little early to give up hope. But when you've got one-year-old dogs, 18-month-old dogs, two-year-old dogs, if he's not doing exactly, like, some people are giving up on him at eight months. <laughs> like, who had the eight-month-old? You had the eight-month-old. I've had people come to me at shows like this and tell me, I just, I'm dog will never do it. I tried. Never do it. I said, how old is it? Eight months old. How do you know? Like, because they look like dogs early, we expect them. We have to understand and be realistic. Spry here is over two years old. And for the next two years, I figure I've got quite a bit of work to do to let her find her first shed. She hasn't found one yet. She's over two, and I'm a professional trainer. 
So take the pressure off of you guys, okay? The reason I do that is because on Instagram, the guy down the road got one that was four months old and he was picking up 17 sheds last weekend. That's Instagram, that's like the highlight reel. I don't know if I believe everything I see there, okay? So I think we have to have realistic expectations with everything we're doing. And the reality is, is patience is going to be, I've, I don't know how many times i said patience today. Patience is, that's a conditioned response. She's quiet as an angel until dad picks this up. Now I got I smile about it because I go, as much as I don't like a whiny dog, that's whining for the right reason. Now I, I won't tolerate it long. Like I, we'll work back on that habit. But back to the shed thing. How do I get him to understand this? is what we want. She just showed you, get up. She just showed you how excited she can be. He got up again from sleep because of my, what I'm doing. I've got a conditioned response in these dogs to understand that these things equal something very good. And so when I start out with this, the reason I start out with this is because this right here, if I take this, it doesn't hurt. Doesn't, it doesn't hurt, does it? Let me try this. This will go through your tractor tire. Like this, this puts holes in tires. This, this, I could poke it into my leg. Not going to. But this right here could be, I had a dog named Finn, a great dog, and I, want, I bought her just to shed hunt with. I had an eight-year-old dog. I had a dog that was a gun dog, bird dog, did a lot of retrieving with her. I wanted to shed hunt with her, so I took this eight-year-old dog who was really good, and I conditioned her to start picking up antlers for me. I used an antler, she picked it up, she brought it back to me, she found more sheds in the first year that I used her. I found more sheds that year than I had found in any year before added together. I was really sold on the idea of using a dog. Now, dogs help because they cover a lot of ground. They use their nose and their eyes. They just do things that make it a lot easier to find more antlers. I also shed hunted with her a lot more than I probably did prior to having the dog with me. If you do anything more often, you're gonna have more success. I think a lot of people think shed dogs fill the back of my pickup truck while I drink coffee. It doesn't work that way. I don't wanna burst your bubble but it's not gonna happen. Now, I walk a lot more miles with my dog because I have a whole other reason to go. It's way more fun. I, anybody in here pheasant hunt? Who does it with a dog? Who does it without a dog? One? Did you do it? He did this year once. He did it this year once, and now he's got a spaniel coming. So, why do, you, why do, we, shed, why do we pheasant hunt with dogs? Well, it's, it's, it's more fun. You couldn't pay me to go walk through a marsh to try to shoot a rooster. I could care less about doing that. I love watching the dog work. It's the most fun. I, duck, I used to duck hunt a lot only because I had a good duck dog. Any, but I used to get invited to really good spots because I had a really good dog. If I had a bad dog, I wasn't getting invited. You want to get uninvited on a trip? Bring a dog that doesn't behave very well. It's the quickest way to get kicked out. But the best dogs always get invited to the best spots. Well, if you go to the best spots, what do you do? Shoot more birds. If you shoot more birds, what does your dog do? It gets a lot better. Like, it's a snowball effect. So the idea of finding antlers with dogs is partially because of the dog, but it's partially because you go more often, and they will find more. I have a buddy that finds 100 sheds every year, no question about it, and I ask him because he's, he's going to find them whether he's got a dog or not. He puts on hundreds of miles. He's in a really good area. He's an outfitter. And I said, how many sheds do you think you find because of scout? Yeah, I trained a scout for him. He said, I think I find 15 to 20 more sheds a year out of 100 to 125. Well, 15 to 20 is more than a lot of people in here will find in the next five years. Who, who, who found 20 more, more sheds last year? You're, at least you're honest. <laughs> I mean, I, he found one. And you found one more than a lot of guys. So I, I don't, I just, I get tired of the idea of people making this sound like 
the barn gets filled with antlers because you got yourself a shed dog. You won't find sheds if there aren't sheds there. It's amazing, isn't it? I live in Wisconsin. You guys, you guys are, this is like the promised land. Like, I love Iowa. I live in Wisconsin, where if a deer makes it past a year and a half old, we're doing really good. Well, you can't find sheds off dead deer. I, I, I tell people that all around. You can't find them if they're not there. The best dog in the world won't find them if they're not there. But if you get into some spots, you guys have it down here, a lot, a lot different. But you will find more, but it's for a lot of different reasons. But how am I going to get them to do it is... I threw this shed, my old dog, I got her to pick up an antler for me. And then I went and I bought a puppy. And I bought this puppy just to shed hunt with and I was so excited about it. And I used an antler and I threw it for her. She was about six months. And she was excited about retrieving. She had a lot of energy. Let's, let's use Tito. We're gonna talk about a little energy here. This dog has a lot of energy. I, 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 this dog might have a lot of energy. Spry, come on. Come here, come on, come on, come on, get up, get up, sit. Okay, let's watch him. You get up. If you look at this dog right now, she is half cocked. Like right now she is, I don't know if I've ever seen someone so tense in my life. She's really struggling. This is a really nice test for her. I'm actually really happy with him. So he's, he's making me a liar. Like, he's very excitable. Now what I want you to do is I want you to watch how he picks this up. Okay, that's a training dummy. That, you just saw it, it's not hard, it's not gonna hurt. Let's see how he picks this up. Oh, I thought we were sending Lily on the retrieve. Okay, now. We'll just see how this goes. Because I just thought about it and I went, you know, we're, we're working on things with him and I put him into a room with however many strangers in a really, ah, 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 heel, heel. Really strange situation. We're just gonna see how he does. Because I may have set him up to fail a little bit. We'll find out. But I, the idea is watch how he picks it up. Because he's really excitable. Teal. Good boy, good boy, good boy. What? Come here, come here. Sit. Spry. Hey, here. Place. Tito. Good boy. Good, good boy, good boy. Come on, come on, come on. Good boy. Good. He's, he's not sure what to think right now. <laughs> I can see his body language, his ears are pinned down. His eyes are this big. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Sit, sit. Let's build off that. Good boy, good boy, good boy, hold, hold. Now did you notice that? Hold, remember what I was telling you? Hold, good, good, hold, dead, good. Now, you're gonna notice he's got pretty good control. That's all foundation. It had nothing to do with his natural instinctive retrieve, it was, he really wanted to go, but he knew he couldn't because he's supposed to sit still, and it's all part of these drills that we work on. If you want to do stuff in the field, you have to do drills that develop skills. In order to do drills that develop skills, you have to have a solid foundation. Like it's, you can't not have it. So we just did all that stuff off a of lead. Now, all you people that have puppies, when you start out with your puppies at home, I want you to hold those puppies and make that bowl of food ready for them. And it's gonna sound just like it did at the kennel and they're gonna freak out because that's the best time of the day at the kennel. Probably four times a day they feed them. And they probably do it on a routine. And when that happens, 
not only is it the best day in the world, best time of the day, but it's also like survival because they probably have six or seven brothers and sisters that will eat, out eat them and they have to eat to stay alive. So it becomes this humongous thing that's ingrained in their mind from about three weeks when they're weaned, three to four weeks when they're weaned off mom to six or seven, eight weeks when they come home with you. That three week window, they can't, they lose it when the food bowl gets rattled because they know what time it is. I want to change that the day I bring them home. So I hold on to these pups and they freak out. They wiggle, they toss, they wiggle, they toss, they whine, they, you hear their heartbeat go like this. It just, I mean, they're coming out of their skin. And you got that bowl of food. And I hold on to it and I set it down and I hold on to pup. And as soon as pup slows the heartbeat, doesn't fuss, takes a deep sigh, some, stops whining for a split second, I set the pup down and I let him eat. And they do their thing. And then the next time I feed them, I do the same thing. And the next time I feed them, I do the same thing. And the next time I do, and until they settle, they don't get to eat. Do it two or three days in a row and watch what happens. It's the most consistent. You're going to feed the dog. If you want to housebreak the dog, control what goes into them, when it goes into them. It, it's a schedule thing. Dogs love schedules. If you live a fractured life, your dog will live a fractured life. If you live a very set, structured life, your dog settles in really nice. They like that. So we get these dogs settling in to routine. And after a day or two of that, they know that the reward comes as soon as they settle. So two, three days in it, you pick the pup up and the pup just goes like this in your arms and they rest. And then you go, oh, very good, set them down. And then you touch their feet to the ground and as soon as you touch their feet to the ground, they go because they're used to you setting them down and they go eat. So now just build off of your settling. Touch their feet to the ground and as soon as their feet go, you just pick them back up. I mean, these are little dogs. You can do that when they're little. Don't wait months because they're real hard to do that with. They get big quick. But when you touch those feet down, pick them up. Touch the feet down, pick them up. As soon as the dog puts his feet to the ground, it doesn't go like this. Thousand one, let him eat. Do that again the next time. Touch their feet. Pretty soon you're going to take the pup, you're going to set the pup down, and they're going to be a statue. They're just going to go, I'm just waiting. Because I know what comes next. As soon as I do this, he lets me eat. Build off of that. Get them to sit. Have their butt hit the ground. As soon as their butt hits the ground, send them on the food. You built, training dogs is easy when we stop setting time aside to train dogs and we realize that you can train them all day long doing whatever it is you're doing. I got to feed the dog no matter what. So I might as well turn it into a lesson. I might as well turn it into three, two, three times a day at the same time, get them into a habit. When, you, when I throw a bumper for him, what did he do? Sat down and looked at it. He just waited. Well, today it's food with this little puppy, Tito. There's his reward. So he goes and he gets to eat. Starts out as food. Pretty soon, this is better than food. You put a bowl of food out, you put a bumper out for Spry, she's going to the bumper. Maybe. <laughs> she really likes her food too. <laughs> but eventually, my dogs realize the reward of an of a antler is better than anything else. And it's not because it's an antler. They don't chew on antlers. My dogs do. Weren't you talking about a dog chewing on an antler before? My, oh, good boy. What is that good boy? Good boy, good boy. Now he's looking for food. He says, where is it? Tito, here, 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 here. Sit. Tito. What did he go to first? Nothing there. Nothing there. Get it. Get it, Tito. Get it, Tito. Get it, Tito. Get it, Tito. Good boy. Hold. Oh. Hold. That's his hitch right now. Hold is a struggle for him. He's a statue right now. Watch his body language right now. He's, he's paralyzed. Hold. I got his eyes. It's real important to get your dog's eyes. When, they, when you've got their eyes, you've got them dead. Good. Sit. Good. Now, it, when I started out with retrieving with him, I didn't do that. We just closed the doors in the hallway and I rolled up a balled up sock and I played with it and he went down, he picked it up and he brought it back. And I'd do it two or three times, twice a week. That was it. Because he already knew how to retrieve. But he didn't know how to sit. And he didn't know how to heal. We're going to do a little heel work. So, Part of our process, let's put Tito back on. 
Surprised been pretty good. She's a little bit of a nut right now, but we're gonna give her a little bit of a reward too. So, here's a lesson for you, preparation. <laughs> Does anybody, this is not a purse, a man purse. <laughs> this is supposed to be a bag with a shoulder strap that I wear across. And then I brought it to the show and I went, oh my God, I grabbed my wrong bag. My dog had chewed through this. So my dogs make mistakes. My dog chewed through this and I didn't take the right bag today. So I'm not gonna be wearing it, but I think it's an important tool because it gets stuff out of your hands. I want my dogs looking at a couple things, my eyes and my hands. Because when I stop a dog and I give them a get back, they need to be watching my hands. When I turn around and I look at them, I want their eyes right, her eyes right now are right on mine. I'm gonna show you a little bit of eye work, spry heel. Now, this is where her eyes are. Damn it, I don't have my bag. I put it in the bag, her eyes go right to me. So I'm gonna take this and hide it. Heel. Sloppy, real sloppy. Let me add one element of control to this. Watch how much better this gets. Heel. Now you'll notice, I use this adjustable leader. This is something that I designed. It's a thing that I can use incrementally to get the dog off lead. She feels the, you, did anybody think she did better when I put the lead on? Because guess what? She felt everything through it. This was not pulling her. I was not guiding her. I did not steer her. I think a lot of people get into the point where they want to steer them. They hold it tight and they, it was loose. I put no, I didn't pop her, I didn't do anything. It was loose. But now, heel. Heel. She still feels the weight of that collar. And to be honest with you, she doesn't know if she's on it now. She knows she's not on it. Heel. Anybody think she wants to make that retrieve right now? Like if you can read body language, wow, she wants it. Do you see how I got her to take a step back? I just leaned into her. It's all right here. It's not fair, isn't it? <laughs> Look at you, just cringing. I'm reading body language and she's going, send her for crying out loud, that poor dog. She's gonna have to earn it. She, she should know better. Like, she's pretty good at this stuff. She's pretty sloppy there for a while. She's tightened up a little bit. She got a little sloppy. She's tightened up a little bit. I haven't done this with her ever right here. Location makes a big difference. So I gotta, give, I gotta be okay with that a little bit. Surprise. What'd she go to? Here. Try. She goes, Dad, nothing. Come here. That time she tried picking it up and bringing it back to me for me to fill it for her. <laughs> now. What is she trying to do? Come on, come on. We flip that bowl over. Actually, pick that bowl up, if you would. 
Just pick it right up on your lap. Spray. Good dog. Good dog. Hold. Hold. Good dog. Did. Good. Now, let's go with Tito. Sit. Okay. Get up. Come on. Spry. Come on. Get up. Look at him. Now, we've been working with him because he's going to go out west. He's going to do some shed hunting out there. So he's got to start picking up elk sheds. So we've been slowly building this up. It's incremental training. Now that feels a lot different than this. The reason I use this is because that young dog of mine that ran up to it with a lot of excitement poked herself with an antler. And then she never picked one up for me. She hated them. She thought it bitter. She wanted nothing to do with it. It took me months just to build her confidence back up to pick up an antler for me. So that's when we started doing this. So I conditioned the shape of an antler by using this to associate with a positive. Does, does anybody here disagree that these dogs think that this is pretty fun? Like these are pretty good things, these equal pretty good things. Okay, Tito. Sit. Sit. Tito. Good boy. What? Blink. Here, here. Tito. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Blink. Here, 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 here. Now, I gotta be careful because I'm going here, 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 here. Anybody else here in, the, in this room? My tension go up. Like, I know it is. I can feel it. I'm getting warm. Like, I'm getting upset. Here, Tito, here. Here, 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 come here, come here, here. Now we got a real circus on our hands. Come here, come here, try, place, come here, come here. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. I need a volunteer. Come on over, big guy. Now, I'm gonna learn from my mistake. Now, have you come over here? And hold on to her. And take Tito here. Taylor, go lay down. All right, I want to get a win. Because right now I'm going, boy, that wasn't very good. But I'm going, boy, I'm sending them on a kind of a long retrieve. There's a lot of things going on here that are totally not what he's used to. I'm going to have Jeff come over here. All I want to do is get him to pick it up. So my whole steadiness thing and be calm and be... No, nah, I'm going to throw it right out the window. This is sometimes what I have to do to find balance in training. Tito, here, 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 here. Uh, Jeff, hold on to Taylor for me if you would. Tito, 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 come here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get it. Good boy, good boy, good boy, come on. That's a good boy. Come on, here, come on, come on, let's go. Here, here, here. Good boy, get it. Come here, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good boy, get it. Good boy, good boy. Oh, that's a good boy. Good boy, come on, come on. Lily wants you to do it too. That's a good boy, come on, come on. It's so close, you're so close. Now, you guys can't see it. Oh, he's trying so hard. Come here, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tito, 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 Tito. Come on, come on, get it. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. Here, 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 here. Now, we're not gonna do that. I will get firm on that. He wanted to lay down and chew it a little bit. Come here, 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 here. Tito, here, 
Come on. Come here. Come on. Here. Here. Come here. Tito, come here. Heel. Heel. Sit. Good. 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 Sit. Hold. 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 Good. Come on. Here. Here. Good. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Hold. Good boy. Hold. Good boy. That's pretty good, huh? Good. Dead. Good. What? Annie can't do that. Annie can't do that? Well, you know what? He struggled with it too. But here's what we're gonna do. Sit, sit, sit. Hold, hold, very good. Heel, come on, heel, good boy. That's a good boy. Hold, good, good boy. Dead, good boy. Sit, sit. Good. He'll, now, he's comfortable on lead. He feels better on lead, I think. I think he got so excited, he kind of lost his mind a little bit there. Hold. Good. Good. Heel. Come on. Come on. Heel. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Tail wag. That's a boy. That's a good boy. Dead. Good boy. Come here. Good boy. Hold. Good. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Hold. Oh, good boy. Slipped out. He caught it. Good boy. Hold. Good. Dead. Good. Hold. Good. Come on. Good. Come on. I want to be real careful and not put that lead on that antler. Good. I don't want to put any pressure on it. Come on, hold, hold, come on, come on, come on. That's a good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, that's a good boy. That's a good boy, good boy, good. Anybody notice anything? Hard for you to see back here, but was there a difference when he came down the aisle here from when he was up there? His tail wasn't wagging. Yeah, his tail, he came down in an uncomfortable place. Well, the first time I did it with him up there, he went like this. Looked like he had to go to the bathroom. He was really uncomfortable. But then by the third or fourth time, the tail started to wag. Hold. Good. Come on. Heel. I tap. Good. Just get him moving. Good boy. Look at that tail. That's a good boy. Hold. Good. Dead. Good boy. Good. So what I'm doing is hold. Hold. Good. Come on. Come on. That's a boy, good boy. I tap him with that lead and it's loose now. Come on, 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 come on. That's a good boy. Here, 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 here. Good, good. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. That's a good boy. That's a, there's a nice little body language. Good boy. Good. Dead. I'd end it right there. Because I got real cocky and thought, I'll just throw the antler for him. He'll go pick it up in a strange place and he'll bring it back to me. And then he didn't. And then I went, damn, now what? And then I got a little bit, a little warmer. And then I got a little warmer. And then he went way over the top. His panting over here was, <laughs> I mean, he was wanting to play with the dogs. The other dogs got pretty excited. Everybody kind of melted down there. Me too. So what do I have to do at that point? Take a deep breath, figure out what can I do to save it? Because I don't want to end it on that. Do you know how many times I end a session the way I planned on ending the session before I went out to do it? It doesn't happen very often. Because I don't know how the sessions are gonna go. And if the sessions always go smoothly, you're living in a dreamland. 
doesn't happen. But I got something out of that. I'm going to end that and go, yeah, we'll build off that. We'll build off that. And next seminar, I might start off with this and learn from my mistakes. Because he'll get better. But I'm going to have to figure out how to get better. To get it better. So I'm constantly, when I talked, I brought up balance for a second there because I thought, I went from very steady, calm, controlled, send him on a retrieve, make the connection to the feeding. He did that just fine. Then all of a sudden he blinked on me, wouldn't pick it up. And I thought, I can, I use, a, I use this idea of sometimes in training we run into brick walls. Unexpected. All of a sudden we're going down the road and all of a sudden there's a wall. And sometimes we want to put our head down and ram through the wall. And I see it a lot. Force training is a lot of that. Well, force through it. I think you break dog spirits. I'm not into that. I don't want dogs to, I don't want him to do something for me because he's afraid of me. I want him to do it because that last tail, that's why I want him to do it. Because I will get, in the end, I will get way more out of my dog than anyone will get out of their dog out of fear if I've got him doing it because he wants to do it for me. That's my, that's my idea behind everything I do with these guys. So instead of putting my head down and ramming through the wall, take a step back, pick your head up, and realize there might be a door right over there. You just got to go over there. Open the door and go through. With him, I thought control, control, control didn't work. So then I went loose as hell. Just let him do whatever. Just get him excited. Just go. Blah, blah, blah. And then he went from way controlled to no control. And I still didn't get it to work. I'm supposed to know everything to do. Well, it didn't work. So now what? So then what I said was, okay, take another step back. Go back to something that I know. As soon as I put this lead on him, I felt him kind of feel calm. A little bit more comfortable. I, it probably helped that I calmed down a little bit too. Eh, we'll just get something out of it. We did something extremely simple. Nothing like I thought we were going to do. But I, fe- I ended with a dog wagging his tail. And now I build off of it. Because then I'll do something tomorrow different. And then I'll adjust. So this whole idea of balance is constant. Go a little bit to the right, go a little bit to the left. Go a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Until you get to the point where your adjustments aren't so big. And then things start to steady up. That's when you kind of get into a rhythm. But you can't be herky-jerky all the time. You got it, but you can't, be, you can't be steady either. You can't be stopped because you'll fall down. So we're constantly trying to find the sweet spot. And that was how we end it. That's, that'll be how we end it with him. And I'll call it a big win. And Spry over there is laying down. Taylor's asleep. I mean, in the last 55 minutes, we didn't cover physically. I bet you we didn't walk 100 yards. And they're tired right now. Because I think the other thing when it comes to balance is I think we have to balance physical stuff with them and mental stuff. He's tired. And he's, and he's feeling pretty good, I think, right now. As he should. So it's a great time to end it with the dogs. I think sometimes we get going and things go well and we just want to keep going. And then all of a sudden... It doesn't go well because... And now where do you find yourself? In a really bad spot. Trying to figure out how to get a win and end the session. So this seminar was a lot different. I don't know if I even used my cheat sheet. Like, I might have talked about three things on it. But it was different than a lot... Like, we're going to do one tomorrow. It won't be like this one. Because Lily isn't going to be here. And, or maybe she will be. I mean, she might, she might make the trip. But we're just going to do things a little bit different. That's training. So I, we have, uh, I, should, I should give a little bit of a time to ask any questions. Does anybody have any questions right off the bat? I don't know exactly how long we have. but When you're training your dog, I, I saw that your one dog was chewing on the antler. Is mm-hmm. that a bad thing? Bad thing. I firmed up at that moment. And I mentioned it. I said, I'm not going to allow that. 
Because chewing on an antler is a habit. It's the wrong habit. I, I don't tolerate it. Because when I go out in the woods, I don't want a dog to find an antler, lay down and chew on it. Now, a lot of people give antlers to dogs to chew on because they're really healthy. I mean, they're full of vitamins and minerals and they're long lasting and I'm not seeing anything wrong with that. I don't use chew toys. I'm, ag I'm against them. I think they're training tools. They train the wrong habit. They, they condition, now if you have done it, take them away. That'll fix it. See, because we, we do both. We have, it's like how we're training our dog now is I'll hide antlers around the house. Sure. And I'll make him sit. And then when I tell him, I said, find the bone, he'll run around the house, he'll find the bone. Sure. Yep. But then he'll chew on it. But, but then, then he'll chew on it. But so. he still chews on because we give him to him. We right. Give him right. So here's, here's the thing. When it comes to training dogs, I talked about habits are formed by repetition and consistency. If you do something over and over and over again, it becomes a habit. Good or bad. You got to be careful of that. Sometimes the best training is don't train the bad habit in. Like that's, that's training in itself. But if an antler, if you have antlers around the house and dogs are, have access to chew on them when they want to, some people are going to say it's great because he stops and he chews on them every once in a while he loves them. But if he walks by them a hundred times a day and chews on them ten, what does he do ninety times? Walked by them. Nine times out of ten he walked by it. I'm not a mathematician, but that's the majority. That forms habits. Repetition and consistency forms a habit. It's just the wrong repetition and consistency. So pick them up and give them value again. The value of an antler shouldn't be chew on. It should be get a retrieve. My dogs love to retrieve. That's why they bring me an antler. If I can use tennis balls. I can put antler scent on a tennis ball and I get a lot of value out of it, but I don't let my dogs have tennis balls all the time and chew them up. I don't let bird dogs chew on birds because it forms the wrong habit. We use them for training and then we take them away. If, if you ate steak dinner every night, steak dinner wouldn't be that exciting to you anymore. But if you get steak dinner quarterly, you're going to look forward to that meal. It's, a, it's got a lot of value. In the springtime when the snow melts, there's going to be pot bottles in the ditch. Why is that? Because people throw them out and then the snow melts and there they are. And the reason people don't pick them up is because they're not worth anything. But if there was a hundred dollar bill in every pop bottle in the ditch, how many pop bottles would you find in the ditch? We'd all pick them up. We don't pick them up because we like pop bottles. We pick them up because there's a hundred dollar bill in them. There's value to them now. My dog has to see value in an antler. So I take it away from them until it's time to train and actually hunt with them. Good question. Do you have a question? Well, so, you know, if you say you have a puppy or an older dog even that's already what you consider, uh, you know, you're trained to sit and stay and yep. as well. How do you introduce the ant, like the drive for the ant? Well, I'd start out the same way I would with a puppy. I'd close, if it, so you're not, you're doing no retrieve, you're saying you don't retrieve with them yet, well, no, or do you? Or they're, they're driven to get pheasants, ducks. Yeah, just change the shape. Not an ant. Just change the shape. Get the reward. With the re so I'd set it up as a real, I'd set up a corridor. I like corridors because it helps channel a dog out and back. And it avoids dogs going out and then running. It's real easy to physically help yourself. If you had a dog that likes to run circles around you when he gets it, make a retrieve with your back against the wall. You just took away 50% of their fail. They can't run around you anymore. So, so set it up for success. I like softball diamonds or baseball diamonds that are next to each other and there's a left field fence line and a right field fence line that run together. Make retrieves in there because the dog can't get out. Now I, before that I'd back, my dogs make their first retrieves, they all do it. We have, a, we have DVDs, we have a shed training DVD, we have a puppy DVD, we have a foundation DVD. They're all sequenced. They're three hours, three hours or more each. Like, I talk a lot. <laughs> so there's a lot of information in there. But they're all sequenced. Well, you'll see where I make every retrieve with my puppies. It's in my hallway with the doors closed. Because there's nowhere else for the dog to go. Out and back, out and back, out and back. Forming habits. And from there I go to my front porch. Because the end is open. You can see through the railing, but you can't get through it. 
So we transferred the habit of out and back, out and back, out and back in a hallway, forced them, can't do anything else, to a little bit more freedom. And then so I make the retrieves in the porch, and then I go on the other side of the porch. I just go on the other side of the railing. And I go back and forth, and lo and behold, there's a lot of stuff out there. But the habit's been formed so strong to go out and back, and, they fit, and that, that railing is there, and they're used to seeing the railing when they run past. It's a guide for them. So I just go to the other side of it. And then from there, I go to my yard, where my yard meets the tree line. I use straight edges all the time. So I'd, I'd make it a fun game. I won't worry so much about the steadiness until they get the, show, the idea of the game. And then from there, I was way over here. Now I gotta start getting back to the steadiness. And then eventually I get in the middle. And what would you suggest then if you have a dog that is very interested in a bird or a bumper, yep. but will not show any interest to that dummy or a real animal? What's your suggestion? Don't retrieve with the other stuff. Make the retrieves with this. Or make, it make the retrieve with this. With an antler scent? Yeah. Don't even put the antler scent on to begin with. Just see if they'll retrieve a tennis ball. If they like bumpers, use a bumper. And then put antler scent on it. it, it you, you might have to get a little creative. But retrievers retrieve. I've never met a retriever that goes, wrong object, I don't want to retrieve it. You threw it for me, I don't want it. You got to get them to understand. So simplify it, get it into a real controlled spot. And on your end, a lot of times it falls back on us as handlers. Like, I sound like a little girl. Lily, don't take offense to that. I sound like a little girl with young dogs, with old dogs. Oh, come back, come back, come back, come back. Oh, you're such a good boy. Come back, come back, come back. I get down like this. If I throw a bumper out to my dog and I go, go get it. Not getting it. I'm not real exciting to him. I throw it out to him. When Tito went up, oh, that's a good boy. And then he didn't do it. And then he went back to it. Oh, you're a good boy. Until it clicks. And then I get down and I go, come on. That's a good boy. If I get down like this, it's real welcoming. If I walk up to her, jeez, Lily. I get down like this. It, it's mannerisms. If I come up to you like this, like, nobody wants to come back to that. A lot of people get excited about their dogs not coming back, and they get mad, and they start hollering, and then they start hollering more, and then they, get over here! Who wants to come to that? Because you know what's going to happen when you get there. That's why they don't come back. So I go, come here, you little son of a... And I trick them into coming. And then I get, go, and I don't give them a, when they come back, I go, you're so good. <laughs> trick them. Got to trick them. It, mentally, you got to you got to like change your. We have to change our mindset at times as a trainer, and and almost remind ourselves. Of it. I remind myself of it. I pray every day for lots of different stuff. I pray for patience first. It's with these guys, but it's with everything else. I got to just be more patient and realize I don't care how old they are. I don't care how many weeks we've done it. I don't care how many days we've done it. I don't care how long it took to get Tito to walk with an antler and not wag his, and wag his tail. I don't care. I did at the moment, but I don't care anymore. Um, you always use a whistle training? I mean, just voice commands? And I like these whistles. Yeah, I like... Well, whistles get out there further. And whistles save your voice. And whistles are real crisp. I like this style whistle. We sell this whistle. So who asked a question? Good, good call. Uh, we got to wrap it up, I think, pretty quick. Who asked a question? You asked one? There's a whistle. There's one. I'm like Oprah. Everybody gets a car. Uh, you got a question? Oh, he's got a question. Uh, so I do like the whistle. These are P-less whistles. We sell them. Um, they're, they're an English style. It's a British style. But there's no P in it. So it won't freeze. It's real crisp. It doesn't have a tendency to flush game if you're a bird, if you're a bird dog guy or gun, you know, if you're doing bird stuff. So it's real shrill. They make a, this is a size 211 and a half. They, I have a 211. I have a couple different sizes. This is my personal favorite. But I use it all the time. And I get used to talking with it in. I, when I'm in the field, I got it in all the time. Because you can't be fumbling around and you miss it. Timing, I didn't even talk about timing. Timing is important. If you're late, forget about it. 2.7 seconds is a dog's memory, short term. It's been proven. I didn't make it up. 
If you don't, if you don't correct or praise in that 2.7 second window, they don't know what you're praising or correcting for. So timing as a handler is real important. You have to be quick. I almost get to the point where I read the dogs and I'm almost doing something before they do it because I've seen it so many times. It becomes a reflex. When you do something a lot, it becomes a reflex. Whatever you do for a living, we had this conversation, I had this conversation with the guy downstairs. He said, I know, I'm just not, boy, I just, I watch you do it. And I said, you know how long I've been doing it? A long time. I said, what do you do for a living? Ah, I just do this. I, do this. I said, were you as, he did it for eight, he's been doing it for 18 years. I said, are you better today than you were day one on the job? Oh, I'm way better. Yeah, because you have 18 years of doing it. You just, re, you just, you're, you just, re, you have a reflex to everything now. It just happens because you've already seen it. You just got to do it more often. How do I train them to stay? Well, I start out with that food thing. I, I think stay is nothing more than an extension of sit. I really don't separate the two. I very rarely tell a dog to stay. I usually tell them sit. Sit means stay. Sit, the difference is, is I can call a dog and I will call a dog occasionally, not young ones, off of sit. If I put a dog on a remote sit, I might call them off once in a while. Older ones, not young ones. You do it with young ones and they start to anticipate it. And then they get what you call a creeper. So you put them on sit and you turn your back on them and they go. And then you turn around and they freeze. And then you turn to walk away and they go. They start creeping. Because they anticipate they're going to get to come. So I don't ever call them off a of sit. I go back to them and get them. Heal. And heal them off. But stay for me is just long sit. But I get them to sit by starting out with a little bit of kibble. Little puppies. Uh, Spry, if you watch live with Spry on our, on our YouTube channel, you'll watch some of the early lessons with her where I'd bring a little piece of kibble and she'd come to me. And, I'd give, and she'd come to me and I'd let her... Give her a piece of kibble. Give her a piece of kibble. And then she, I took the kibble away pretty quick. She'd come to me and I'd praise her for it. But I'd also have a little piece of kibble and then I'd bring it up. And her natural instinct was to follow up. And she got her nose up higher when her butt went low. And as soon as her butt went low, I gave her a little piece of kibble. She sat. She did that a few times. Then I took the kibble away and I replaced it with praise. But then I start taking a step back. And then I come to them. And then I give them the praise. So it's real incremental. But if you can get them to sit, you can get them to stay. Same thing. Good question. Anybody else? Do you have a preference or find any advantage of training a female over a male? I definitely have a preference. I like females. I've had a lot of luck with them. I, my best dog I ever trained was a male, so he rolls over in his grave every time I say that. But uh, I think it is preference. Um, my, I find that females tend to be a little softer. I like soft dogs. But I've met a few females that are pretty, pretty tough in their own right. So um, the problem with Tito, one of his biggest struggles has been, I have five other or six other females in the house. They come into season, he loses his mind. It's really hard. It's real hard on him. I message with Jeff about it because it throws him... It just throws him for a loop. He struggles. I mean, he's a teenage boy. <laughs> like, he's a year and a half. So, he has a hard time with that. So, for me personally, it's a lot easier if I have females. But I do think it's preference. Good question. You want to whistle? Anybody else? I have one for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, uh, I had a, I'm, I'm not a trainer. I've watched book, and, and my first dog went really well. I have a lot of things with that yep. on my dog. Where the first one, it went, thanks. <laughs> anyway, the uh, uh, back went really easy with my first dog. But yep. I, I, she's about five now. And what does she do? Back is really tough. What does, so back should come before anything else. Back is, I do back for three to four months before I go right or left. Yeah, she'll, 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 she'll follow the hands right and left. And because right, and the reason is, is because right or left usually gets a retrieve. Back rarely, in, in your drills, think about it, back rarely gets a retrieve. It's always, if you start hand, multiple handling, like if you handle the dog back and then you go right, if you got a bumper out there and you're sending them to it, 
Very rarely will back be the last command before they make a retrieve. It's almost always right or left. You get them back to a certain distance and then you grid them over. They get that in their mind where right and left is where I get retrieves, not back. So it makes it really hard for them mentally to go back. So I go back, 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 back for months before I ever go right or left. So that back is so into them, they can't make a mistake with it. So if you go right or left and back equally, right or left becomes way better. And it makes it really hard on them to go back. So no more rights or lefts. All back, all back, all back. And simplify it. Pitch over the head, get back. Pitch over the head, get back. Does it don't. matter which way they turn to go back? Do, I don't, doesn't matter to me. Because I've had a dog train and they said, you know, left, right, back, back See, is back to me. Right, doesn't matter to me. I don't do 45s to me. I don't trial. I could care less how many times I handle a dog to get a bird. As long as we get, as long as we get the bird. Huh? Yeah, for show, isn't it? Right. right, it's a, it's for scoring. Right, they're doing so the same thing at the end. I, I am big on, they, you know, it's the least amount of handles to get to a bird for trials, like a point thing. I could care less about that. You keep your ribbons, I'll take the birds. So I go back as far as the depth needs to be, and then I go, I try to handle in grid, because then it's easy instead of, you get complicated with 45s and all that stuff. It's a lot of gray area to a dog. I, you you want to see how hard it is? Have your buddy handle you from about 100 yards. I mean it. Have someone stand there and give you hand signals from 100 yards away and ask them to give you a 45 versus a back versus a right. And see how much different it really looks to you. And then get down on your belly and watch because that's the plane that they have. It's hard. So back, 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 back. Keep going back. And simplify it. Make it very simple. Make it simple. Put it in his mouth and make him heal. It couldn't get much more easy. And then we'll build from it. How do you do the recall training? If he's out in the woods, then he's not going to just like run off yeah. from that? We don't start it out in the woods. There's too many distractions. In the hallway, okay. with the doors closed. In the fe get, get, get something that controls that. I've literally had buddies build with snow fence channels just to get dogs to come back and forth in it. Take away, eliminate a lot of the distractions. The thing that gets in the way of recall is distractions. It's valuable. There's more valuable things out there than you. So, we need, so the best way to get recall is this. I call it reverse heel. This is how I would start. Put the dog on heel, heel, get loose. Good. 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 Like, we're four feet away from each other. That's where I'd start. Because you didn't see any mistakes with that. It was perfect. And if it wasn't, I could have went like this. Tapped her to me. One little tap and she's here. Start that, then work off lead. It all should be perfect on lead before it's off lead. It's just incremental. Do you, do you lengthen the lead? Sure, you can. But I, the problem is, is my dogs get so darn good at heel, it's hard for me to get them out. So sometimes I won't even tell them to heel. I'll just start to wander and I kind of lose them and then I beep, 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 surprise them, get them to come to you. Oh, good. Rod of praise, you're good, that was really good. Give them to do that too. Then they're gonna turn, then all of a sudden recall turned into a game. Recall wasn't, ah, mom's nagging me again. It's, what do I get? Oh, good. Good, boy. good girl, good boy, scout, you're so good. And he, God, that's all you want? That's it, come running to you and you'll really, and then you start forming a habit. Then you can start to extend it. It starts right here. Because she can't run away. If she decides she doesn't want to come, that was it. Just tapped her. Remind her. No, you're with me. Come on. Come on. Good. Don't do it outside. Yeah, don't do it outside. So you got to get to those distractions by adding one at a time. You, I have a saying, A to B to C to D will get to Z. If you go A to Z, you'll fail. They can't jump like that. So if you can't do it 
If you can't do it in your garage with nothing in there and no distractions, you can't do it outside. If you can't do it in the garage with no distractions, move inside, move into the hallway, get, in, get into a spot that she finds success and then do it again and again and again and then find another spot that's similar to it and get success there. I train by a rule of fives, five days in a row in five different locations before I move on. It forces us to slow down. Five times five is 25, that's 25 days. What's the hurry though? You know, you're probably thinking, geez, that's gonna take a long time. Yes, it will. Where's the fire? You know, it's just, it'll take a little while. But as soon as you stop worrying about how long it takes, it goes quicker. It just does, always does. Great question. Anybody else? I should probably wrap it up. Is it never too late to start whistle Never. Oh, thanks. <laughs> never too late. Never too late, but you gotta have it, you gotta have it mean something to them. So if you have a dog that has a little bit of recall, just incorporate it in. Just tie it in. Here, 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 do, 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 do. while they're running to you, blow the whistle. Beep, 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 beep. What are they doing? The action at that moment connected to the sound at that moment will stick with them. It'll turn into a habit. It'll be burned into their memory. So, in, it, but you got to time it. If you go here, 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 and then the dog comes to you, and then you go beep, 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 missed it. Timing's off. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Uh, we got a booth downstairs. So if you got more questions, I'm not trying to cut out on you, but I think there might be someone after me. So uh, we'll head down to our, our booth. Thank you, though, for coming.